Hello students, welcome back. It's Thursday. So for today, I want you all to uh, do your lesson, your today's challenge uh, in Schoology. You are to read the paragraph below and answer the two intensive questions. All right, so what are we doing today, Ms. Carrasco? Well, for today's challenge, you should have already completed your making inferences in Schoology. For Reader's Workshop today, we are going to be uh, looking at a Pearson tutorial um, and then we will be reading the case of the disappearing words. Um, and then for Writer's Workshop, I want everybody to finish their memoirs today. You will be taking a picture of your memoir and uploading it to Schoology so that I can grade it at home. Uh, for today, we are not having any stations. Um, once again, uh, as always, for debriefing, if you are in class, you will be receiving a cold call from Ms. Kolb um, on what you learned today. And for your exit ticket, we will be answering an essential question based on today's lesson. Essential question for Reader's Workshop. How could a language be considered a breathing, living thing? So I don't want to take a lot of time um, today giving you a really huge lecture about this very specific and broad topic, as paradoxical that sounded, but um, what I do want you to do is just have a little bit of background information that is going to help you um, make personal connections and think critically about this essential question. Um, after you watch the video and during the time that you are reading the uh, informational text, uh, the case of the disappearing words. So I'm just going to give you a quick little slideshow on what a linguist is. A person who studies languages is called a linguist. In a way, you are a linguist. Um, you're not technically considered one because you, you know, would have to be sort of like a scientist or philosopher, someone who goes to school for that. But in a way, informally, you are a linguist. You have been studying the English language since pre-kindergarten or kindergarten, um, or even before that, you know, maybe the moment you started to recognize sounds coming from your parents and you started mimicking those sounds you know you were already uh, an entity that was learning about language learning to communicate you have been looking at how symbols that we use uh, that we call letters can be put together to create a word to express something like yes or food you have also studied what each letter sounds like and how to train your tongue, your mouth, and even your throat to create the same sounds as everyone else so that you can all communicate in the same way and understand each other. So whether you believe it or not, you've been doing everything I just said. You've been doing this for a very long time and you're continuing to do all of those things. But I don't know if anybody has actually taught you about how the English language started. Now, when I went to college, you know, I was able to dive really deep into this topic. But, I mean, I'm not going to do that to you because I had to study that in one course and it took an entire semester. Um, and maybe even my entire four years, but that's okay. Like, what I'm just trying to do here is just give you a background on you know how it started 
uh, I think we kind of started talking about a little bit about like the English language history, but I'm not really sure. I can't remember. Uh, but I want you guys to watch this uh, video on the next slide, and it's about 12 minutes long. Um, and I want you to think about it, about the question, the essential question, um, as you watch the video. I want you to think about how can a language be considered a living thing? This is the History of English. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do. And also, check out my courses in the link in the description. The English language is a big, beautiful mess. Few languages are as diverse and unexpected in their history. And few have undergone changes so dramatic and so violent. Welcome, Welcome to the, to the history, history of English. Of English. Let's, Let's begin. begin. We can, we can categorize, categorize the development of English, of English into three distinct eras. eras. Old, Old English, English from 450, 450 to 1100, Middle, Middle English, English from 1100 to 1500, and Modern, modern English, English from about 1500 up until, until the present. The present. And, and if you didn't, didn't notice, notice I'm actually, actually speaking, speaking modern, modern English, English right, now. right now. Can I just, Can I just stop, stop here and remind everyone, everyone that, that languages, languages change and evolve over time? time. I, just I just want to make, make sure we're clear, clear on, that. on that. Just like just animals, animals, languages fade, fade and, go and go extinct. One language, One language may, spread may spread so wide, so wide for example, that in, that in specific, specific regions, regions local, local dialects, dialects creep in and those become new languages. That's what happened to Latin, basically. It's a very, it's a very natural, natural process, process, and it's, and it's very, very similar, similar to evolution, evolution in animals. animals. Some, some languages, languages are, are pretty different, different just, just like, like some animals, animals are, pretty are pretty different. different. Here's, Here's an, an African, African click, click language. language. Here's, Here's a barrel, a barrel language. Language. Right, right, well, well back, back to, the, to topic. the topic. You make, you make me sad. sad. English, English is a Germanic, a Germanic language. language. What does that, what does mean? that mean? Does that does mean, mean English, English is, German? is German? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Germanic, Germanic is a word, is a word used, used for a group, for a group of, people of people from a from particular part of the world, world who once probably, probably spoke, spoke the same, same language. language. A language, a language which, which doesn't, doesn't exist today. today. Germanic, Germanic languages, languages now include, include German, German English, English, Dutch, Dutch Swedish, Swedish, Danish, Danish and, and quite a, quite a few, few more. more. So think, so of, think all of all of these, these modern, modern languages, languages as, as having a great great, great grandma, grandma in common, common called, called Proto Germanic. Germanic. Grandma, grandma Proto Germanic. Proto -Germanic. Something, Something like, like that. that. To be to clear, be English, English does, does not, not come from German. German. English, English and German are basically cousins. cousins. The history, the history of the English, English language, language is a history, history of invasion, invasion and, the and the movement of people, of people. And, and the beginnings, the beginnings are, are no different. different. During, During the time, time England was, was under the control, control or protection, or protection whatever, whatever you want to call, call it, of the Romans, Romans, a few Latin, Latin words, words stuck, stuck with, with the Celtic, Celtic locals, locals people, people who were living, who were living there, there at, the at the time. We used, we used prefixes, prefixes like, like pro and sub in modern English as a result. The Romans, the Romans left, left Britain, Britain around 400, 400 AD, AD, leaving the Celtic, Celtic Britons, the, the locals, locals, now pretty, pretty vulnerable. vulnerable. This, this allowed, allowed Germanic, Germanic tribes, tribes and and remember, Germanic, Germanic, Germanic tribes, tribes to come, to come in, in and settle. And settle. In, fact, in fact, it happened, happened over, over a fairly, fairly long, long period, period of time, time so, so it wasn't, wasn't exactly, exactly an invasion. An invasion. So what, so I, what mean I mean is, it didn't happen on a Tuesday. The Germanic tribes pushed most of the Celtic Britons out and settled in modern-day England. Old English grew, grew out, out of this, of this period, period, and from the, from the early, early 6th, 6th century, century to about, to about 1100, 1100, we have Old English. English. From, that, from that, we get, we get works, works like, like Beowulf. Beowulf. So let's, so let's listen, listen to some, some Old English, English from, from the 700s. If you couldn't understand that, don't worry. I couldn't understand a single word. Maybe I can hear words like 
and, and sometimes, sometimes I, think. I think. But, but really, really, it's, it's so, so far away from, from modern, modern English. English. Basically, Basically, it's, it's another, another language. language. So what's, so what's next? next? Well, well, everything, everything was, going was going fine in Britain, Britain until, until those, those damn, damn Vikings, Vikings invaded, invaded, bringing, bringing with, them with them another language, another language called, called Old Norse. Norse. It's, another it's another language. language. From, there from there we get, we get words, words like, like reindeer, reindeer, dirt, dirt choose, choose, egg, egg and, and kindle. kindle. The word, the word Thursday, Thursday means, means, does anybody, anybody know? know? Thor's, Thor's Day. Day. Thursday, Thursday means, means Thor's, Thor's Day. Day. It, it comes, comes from, from Old, Old Norse. Norse. To put, to put that, that into, into perspective, perspective, about 1% of modern, of modern English, English comes, comes from, from Old, Old Norse. Norse. It's about, it's about 2,000 words. Important event, important event in the history, in the history of, the of the English language, language was, was the Norman, Norman invasion, invasion or the, or the Norman, Norman conquest. conquest. This was, this was an, invasion an invasion led by a guy, guy who was basically a French-speaking French Viking, Viking named William, William the, Conqueror. the Conqueror. After, After William, William took, took over Britain, Britain in 1066, French started sneaking, sneaking into, into the English, English language. language. French, French words, words were spoken, spoken more by, by the upper, upper class, class, the wealthy, wealthy people. people. And, and old, old English, English was spoken, spoken more, more by common, common people, people, by people in the, in the lower, lower classes. classes. So, today so today we have, we have pairs, pairs of words, of words that, have that have almost the same, same meaning. meaning. One, one from, from old, old English and one from, from old French. French. Words, words like, like lawyer, lawyer and attorney, attorney dean and, and judge, judge, hunt and chase, pig and pork, cow and beef, freedom and liberty. Weird, Weird and strange. And strange. I, could I could go on, go on for, for days. days. Now, now we don't, we don't make, make the distinction, but the Norman, Norman conquest resulted, resulted in a much, much more colorful language, language, language that allowed for more creative, creative expression. expression. Over, Over 7,000 7, English, English words that we, that we use today are from, are from French, French basically, basically, the Norman, the Norman conquest. conquest. So, so this invasion gave us what we now call Middle English. Let's, Let's listen, listen to, to a, bit a bit of the, of the Canterbury, Canterbury Tales, Tales from, from about, about 1400. One that appeal with a shorter sota, the draught of March hath burst to the rota, and bothered every vine in the poor, of which bear to engender it is the poor. When Zephyrus ate with his sweet breath, in spirit hath in every old and eff the tender crops. Next, Next is, is early, early modern, modern English, English, and there's, and there's no, no real invasion, invasion here, here, only important, important people, people and events. events. First, First Shakespeare. 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 Shakespeare is credited, credited with creating, creating a huge number, number of English words and phrases, and, phrases, and his, his plays, plays are, are extremely influential to this, to this day. day. From, From him, him we get, we get words, words like, like assassination, cold-blooded, cold -blooded, manager, manager, uncomfortable, and many many, many more. more. Whether, Whether you, know you know it or, it or not, not, you're probably, probably quoting, quoting Shakespeare, Shakespeare on a, on a daily, daily basis. basis. Here's, Here's a little, little Shakespeare. Shakespeare. A poor, a poor player, player of the struck some reflected hour upon the stage. And there is her no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fear. Signifying nothing. The other, the other really, really important, important event that helped, that helped to shape modern, modern English, English was the Great, great vowel, vowel Shift, shift which, which was, was in, in the 15th, 15th century. century. Now, now this, this was essentially a change in, in English pronunciation. Vowels, vowels are A, E, I, O, U. And you can, you say, can them say, say them different ways. ways. Sometimes, sometimes we say A as A, a and sometimes, sometimes we say A, a as A. As a. a. Well, it, well didn't it didn't used, used to be like that. that. So there was so a major shift in the way that vowels and many other sounds in English were pronounced. A word like name K and A V E would have been pronounced something like Kanave. Kanave. Now, now we have, we have a, a silent, silent K. K. So we don't, so we don't say Kanave. Kanave. We say we mm. Mm. No. no. Knowledge. Knowledge. Nave. Knives. Knives. We say, we say just. just. Mm. Mm. 
And we and also, we also have, have long vowels, vowels like, like A instead, instead of A. Ah. And we and have we a have silent, silent E, which, which makes, makes no sound, sound but, but changes, changes the short, short A, A to a long A. A. The, rules the rules of spelling were being written down around, around the same, same time, and unfortunately, unfortunately the, writing the writing people, people the spelling people, people didn't, didn't seem to be talking to the, to the pronunciation, pronunciation people. people. So the, so the pronunciation, pronunciation changed, changed, but the, the spelling, spelling hasn't, hasn't really changed. changed. We say K-N-A-V-E, nave, nave, like nave, nave N-A-V-E, but, but still spell it in the most ridiculous possible, possible way. way. I have a, I have feeling, a feeling that's starting, starting to change, change, but if you ever get confused with English spelling and you want to shout at someone about it, get in a time machine and yell at someone writing down words in the 15th century. I would be I would remiss, be remiss not, not to mention, to mention the, influence the influence of the King James translation of the Bible, Bible as well. Apart, Apart from, from strengthening these strange word spellings, spellings many, many new, new phrases, phrases and, and idioms were created, created for that translation, translation and, we and we still use, use those, those today. today. Phrases, phrases like, like by, the by the skin of, skin your, of your teeth, teeth and, and a broken heart, heart and, a and a sign of the, of the times. times. There, there are a ton of modern expressions that come from the King James Bible. Finally, Finally, we come, we come to, to modern, modern English, English and an, and an ironic, ironic reverse invasion as Britain began, began to explore the world, world by sea and, and colonize. As English, as English spread to places, places like India, Africa, Africa North, America, North America, and Australia, and Australia via, via trading, trading and, and colonization, colonization some, some words began, began to trickle, trickle back, back slowly, slowly to England. England. We get, we get pajamas, pajamas from, from India. India. Trek, Trek from, from Africa, Africa and, and ketchup, ketchup from China. China. Of, course, of course, English, English also, also spread to those colonies, colonies and, and new dialects, dialects began to take shape in those, those places. places. So, so who knows, knows maybe, maybe California, California English, English will become, become a completely, a completely new, new language someday. someday. I think it's I think pretty, pretty close. close. So my, my American accent, like, like, do you do you heard on Terminator? Kind of changed, changed a little bit into, into uh, um, Cali Valley. Valley. <laughs> so, like, like this, she's like this whole, whole like, like situation. That's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Okay. Okay. The English, the English language, language continues, continues to evolve, to evolve. And, someday and someday the words, the words I'm, speaking I'm speaking right, right now, now will sound as old and strange, and strange to future listeners, listeners as, as old English, English sounds, sounds to me. To me. That's, That's just, just how, it how it goes. You make, you make me sad. Me sad. All right, so it is now time for you to log in to your digital textbook through Saba's Easy Bridge in Classlink. So you will have to access your textbook digitally through the app on Classlink. So if you don't know how to get there, remember that you go to ectorcountyisd.org, click on Classlink, and then look for your Saba's Easy Bridge. Um, app on there. You're going to click on it and it should open up your Pearson textbook, My Perspectives. Um, it might prompt you to set up your profile with like a picture or like an avatar, stuff like that. Um, you go ahead and do that and you're going to select Grade 7 for English Language Arts as your textbook. And um, I'm going to want you to go to page 14 and we're going to start reading the case of the disappearing words. If you don't know how to open up your textbook to page 14 digitally, you can always look for the story in the table of contents by clicking on the menu, then clicking on table of contents, and then um, going under Unit 1, Whole Classroom Instruction, and then look for the case of the disappearing words. So I'm not going to play this video because it's going to take forever, but I will try to give you a link so that you can click on the link for this tutorial on how to log in for your digital textbook. Alright, so the next thing that we are doing today is uh, finishing up your final drafts uh, for your memoirs. So. Um, I believe you've had enough time to write your memoirs um, and if you are still working on them, you need to work on them for the rest of the class period 
and they are due by the end of the day. Uh, let's review on what types of revisions and edits you should be making before uh, rewriting your final draft. Uh, so before you start rewriting it, um, I want you to check for spelling errors, capitalization errors, punctuation errors, um, and determining whether you should be adding more details um, throughout your memoir to help me paint a picture in my mind as I am reading your memoir at home. Um, I will be grading these throughout the weekend, so please make sure that you submit them today. Please take a picture of it uh, once you are rewriting it. So once you have revised and edited your memoir, make sure that you rewrite it in another sheet of paper as neatly as possible so that I am able to read it um, through the picture. Um, as I said, it's due today, so if you could just go ahead and get started with that. Um, and then make sure that you uh, go to Reader's Workshop, and I believe the assignment was located on Monday's folder, because I believe I was expecting y'all to turn them in on Monday, but I haven't seen y'all's memoir, so I'm really looking forward to seeing y'all's memoirs and, and reading all of y'all's great memories. So go ahead and get started. And for the debrief, uh, this is for in-class students. Um, for your exit ticket, this is also for in-class students. How could a language be considered a breathing, living thing? So go ahead and answer that question and then have a happy Thursday.